is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children from Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked John, What then should we do? In reply, John said, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do like them. Even tax collectors came to be baptized by John, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? John said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. And soldiers asked him, And we, what should we do? John said, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And so, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. I have uh, three young children in my home. I have my son Ethan, who is just over four years old now, and two little girls who are 16 months old, uh, twins, born a little over a year ago. And I can remember back uh, about four and a half years ago when my wife and I were expecting our very first child, expecting Ethan to come. And we were doing all of the things that first-time parents do. We were you know, getting the nursery ready and buying all those little baby gadgets, and we had just a wall full of stuff. We had all the clothes, we had the little special diaper pail thing, we had all of the uh, bottles and the formula, and just anything you could imagine for a baby was probably in that nursery room, piled up in a whole bunch of boxes. We were doing everything we could to get ready. We had some of the baby books, we read through a few of those. We had all of this stuff, and by the time we were maybe a month out, a month away from Ethan's due date, we, uh, anytime we'd go somewhere, we'd always get the same question, no matter who we were talking to, no matter where we were, they would always ask me and my wife, are you ready? And we hear this question again and again and again, and eventually, we had all of this stuff piled up in the nursery, and we talked about all the things we got. I, I felt kind of confident. I felt like, you know, we might actually be ready. We got all of the things, the nursery's all set, there's nothing else to buy or to pick up, we're just ready to go. We got the bag packed for the hospital, and so... This question will come up, and I explain what we've done again and again. And I remember about two weeks before Ethan was going to be born, being with my parents. And my dad was talking with us, and he finally asked us that same question. So, are you ready? And again, I started talking about all of the stuff we've done, all of the things we've got, all of the books that we had. And he just kind of stops me about midway through. And he looks at me again, and he says, Are you ready? So I stop again, I kind of look back at him, and I just answer honestly, no. And my dad looks back at me, and I remember this really, really clearly. He looks back at me and says, 
No, you're probably never going to be ready. But that's okay. That moment stuck with me, and it's echoed through my mind a number of times over the last four years as I've not been ready for almost anything that my kids have done. Uh, it's an entirely different journey, an entirely different path. Everything about my life is, is different than I could have anticipated before. Those words stick with me. You're not ready, but that's okay. I think those words hold some promise for us today as well. You see, the story that I'm reading, we have John the Baptist yelling at the people from the wilderness. You brood of vipers, repent, all of these other things. He probably said worse things than that. They just didn't write them down. But John the Baptist is out there. He's trying to get everybody ready. That's his job. You can think of John the Baptist as like the book, What to Expect When You're Expecting a Messiah. That's his job. He's getting everybody ready. He's telling them all of the things they need to do. They need to get baptized. They need to give away their extra coats and share their food and not take too much money if you're a tax collector and do these things if you're a soldier. He's putting the list together of all the things they have to get and do before this day comes. But I think we all know the truth, that no matter how much John the Baptist screams in the wilderness, no matter how much people say they repent and show up and get baptized, there's really nobody out there that's going to be ready for what's about to happen next. There's nobody in the whole story of Jesus being born and God coming to us that is ever ready for what God is about to do. It's, you kind of walk through the Christmas story as it's going to be told in the next service with our kids or, you know, even like the Peanuts on, on uh, TV. Anytime you hear that Christmas story, pay attention to all of the people who hear the news. None of them are ready. Not Mary. Not the shepherd, not the wise men. Everybody who hears what God is doing is completely blown away. No matter how much preparation they've done, no matter how many times they've repented, when God goes to work, there's nobody who's ready for it. And that's kind of the way God works. Not just in this story, but I think in our lives, too. I think if we look back on the points in our lives where we felt God's presence the most, where we felt the course of our lives shift a little bit, it's often those moments that, that hit us by surprise. Those times when we thought we were ready, but we had no idea what was coming. That's the moments where God goes to work, whether it's a new child and a family transforming the dynamic and the people that are involved there. Maybe it's a new phase in your life, ending a career, taking a new job, moving to a new city. We do all sorts of things to prepare, but those moments that change our lives are often the ones we could never prepare for. Those moments when we weren't ready. But here's the message that comes through in this story, in the Gospel, and in the story of Jesus. That those moments where we're not ready, where we're completely overwhelmed, where something takes hold of us and sends us down in a completely new direction. Those moments that we're not prepared for. Those are the moments where God shows up. And God shows up whether we're ready or not. God shows up and says, you're not ready, but that's okay. Again and again throughout the Gospel story and the story of Jesus, God shows up in places that nobody expected God to be. From a manger and a little cave in Bethlehem to the outskirts of cities to alongside people like prostitutes and tax collectors and other sinners again and again and again. Jesus, God with us, shows up in all of the places God was never supposed to be. And God, I don't think, has stopped doing that either. In our own lives, God shows up in those moments when we never expect to see God at work. God shows up in the people that we never thought God could work through. God shows up when we least expect it, when we're not ready. He sends us down a new path and in a new direction. As we sit here, we're sitting here waiting for this new thing to happen. 
Advent on Christmas. The Advent is a season of waiting. We're waiting for Jesus, for God, to come into our lives. And I think, as we look around, as we think back to our lives, we can see that again and again and again, in those moments we least expect, God does show us. God challenges us, and God sends us back out into the world around us. Often when we least expect the people, we least expect to go to. Again and again, God comes to us. Ready or not, God comes to us even though we're not prepared. He says the very same thing. You're not ready, but that's okay.